batteries. They were invented in 1800, the lithium ion battery, 1970. This is old technology. So why are we still using such ancient tech in our futuristic modern EVs? Morning. Today I want to talk about the energy storage that we have in our EVs and why are we using such old-fashioned technology. We've used these lithium-ion batteries in and about our houses for decades. They're in everything. They're in mobile phones, cameras, uh, radios, all over the place. We're using them every single day. And there's a good reason for that. They're really reliable, they hold uh, a good energy density, so they can uh, discharge over a good amount of time and we can recharge them. The downside is they take a long time to recharge and they degradate. They degradate over time, depending on how you look after them, depending on how many times you charge and discharge them. So before I move forward, let's look at a lithium ion battery and uh, stand by for some highbrow scientific explanation here in a typical Ryan fashion, my simple brain, here it comes. Um, a lithium ion battery, basically has two ends, as we know, uh, an anode and a cathode. Inside it is lithium ions, and the, a chemical reaction takes place in there whereby the positively charged lithium ions want to get from the anode to the cathode. We run, or we give it a route through a piece of equipment, through our mobile phone. As it goes from the anode through our mobile phone to the cathode, it discharges itself, and that's what gives our devices the power they need. And then when we plug it in to recharge it, they charge and go back to the other end, and that process starts again. There you go, highbrow science. You didn't think you were gonna get that on this channel, did you? Uh, so it's a simple process done with a chemical reaction inside that battery cell. I've made no secret of the fact that I think that the next evolution of electric vehicles we'll see the end of lithium ion, and it will see us using solid state batteries, uh, much quicker to charge, much more dense power. Uh, they basically, we will get more range out of a solid state battery and it will be quicker to use. So I think that's probably our next evolution. But there must be something else. We can't just keep relying on batteries. So what else are people looking at and what else is being designed? Well, capacitors. Now, we've had capacitors for years. Capacitors sit on uh, circuit boards and computers and, again, all host of things that you'll find around your house. They obviously don't hold very much charge. They're very, very minimal. But there's something called a supercapacitor. Now, again, it's been about for a little while, but it's being developed and it's being used in the automotive industry already. Now, a supercapacitor uh, holds uh, a huge amount of power. Uh, the trouble is it's not very dense in power. So whilst it holds a, a large amount of power, it also dumps that power very quickly. Now, let's go back to some highbrow science. Uh, in essence, there is no chemical reaction inside. So it becomes very stable and very reliable. You can charge it hundreds or thousands of times more than a lithium ion battery, and it will have no effect on it. It won't degradate in any way, shape or form. Uh, Again, you charge it, the positive ions sit on one side, there's a barrier down the middle, and the negative is on the far side. The positive wants to get to the negative, uh, so as soon as it finds a route through, it drives itself across in one instant hit. Now, imagine you've just walked across a kind of a nylon-y carpet and you touch a metal door handle, and you get that static shock. That's pretty much the same, it's just instant discharge. Uh, the problem, as I said, is, although it's very stable, very reliable, can be charged and re-discharged hundreds of thousands of times. It, it, the power that comes out of it isn't enough to, for example, drive an electric vehicle. Um, it would drive it a short distance, but then it would lose all its power. So you could say, well, okay, we'll put more supercapacitors in because this sounds brilliant. Well, unfortunately, they're very big and uh, they don't necessarily weigh an awful lot, but in order to get enough energy to drive uh, an electric vehicle, say 100 miles, you'd be dragging along a trailer of supercapacitors to make it work. So it's just not practical. But that's not to say that people aren't trying to develop them further. And 
the moment, at the moment, what people are trying to do is develop a substance to sit inside that can hold more density of power within it. But that is kind of the holy grail at the moment. It's, it hasn't been manufactured, hasn't been found. There's ideas uh, around it using graphite and other materials, but at the moment it hasn't happened. So could we not use it then to help improve what we've already got? So could it sit and run alongside a lithium ion battery? Well, basically the answer is yes, absolutely it can. Now we've seen uh, already it being used in vehicles. It's used in start-stop start technology. If we transfer that across to our electric vehicles, well, we could use it to assist the driving uh, and the power of the lithium ion. So for example, if you accelerate harshly or hard and you're trying to get up to speed very quickly, we could have a supercapacitor running alongside that would introduce that extra power that it needs. Therefore, uh, taking less strain on the lithium ion, so it's not discharging as quickly, so it, uh, it expands its life cycle, but also it retains some of its charge, so we can go further, our range is increased. So there's no reason why we couldn't sit them in alongside. And then uh, through regenerative braking, it could then recharge the supercapacitor, ready for that next burst of energy that it needs. And I think that would be a really good application for it. So if they're that good, there must be somebody making use of them. Well, of course there is. Uh, Geely, who are a massive Chinese company, they own the likes of Volvo. Uh, they have just signed uh, an agreement with Maxwell Technologies, who make supercapacitors, conveniently. Um, they've signed an agreement that they are going to produce at least five of their electrified vehicles using Maxwell Technology supercapacitors. And the first one will be released in 2019. And they're talking about using it exactly the way as we've um, discussed. They have said that uh, it would be uh, fantastic for uh, regenerative braking. So the fact that a supercapacitor can be charged almost instantly, so, so quickly, that regenerative braking will put all the power back into it. And then it can be used for acceleration, uh, the instant power that will help smooth out that power delivery that the lithium ion battery could struggle to deliver. Let's hope it goes one step further than that. Let's hope that this instant recharge, it could actually help to recharge the lithium ion battery, either as it's driving or is there any reason why we couldn't plug in, charge a supercapacitor as well as the lithium ion battery at the same time, and then that power can be transferred across from the supercapacitor to the lithium ion battery to give the battery some more power uh, and give you a longer range? Much cleverer people than me, I'm sure, are working on that at the moment. But that said, uh, this technology, it, we are going to start seeing it in our electric vehicles very, very soon. And uh, hopefully, this will also. Uh, is something that can be transferred onto solid state batteries because ultimately they can be charged, uh, recharged much quicker. So perhaps that link with the uh, supercapacitor could be even more profound if we put it with a solid state battery. Uh, and then moving forward, if we can get that technology, if somebody can master a supercapacitor that can hold uh, vast amounts of energy, then not only will that person be exceptionally rich, but we will all benefit from it and um, electric vehicles will be nothing like what we experience at the moment. So, um, so hopefully that's the future and hopefully that's uh, given you a little bit of a guide towards where we might be going over the next few years because uh, I think we can all agree we see electric vehicles as being the future but they still look like cars and they're still being run on very old technology. So let's start moving things on. And um, these very clever people are starting to do that. So uh, that's it for today. That was a little update I wanted to give you. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed it. Hopefully uh, it hasn't been too highbrow for you. <laughs> How that could be highbrow for anyone, I have no idea. But um, hopefully I've explained it in a way that um, everybody will understand uh, because uh, that's how I like it. But um, for now, hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, remember to like and share this video. And if you're not doing so already, subscribe to the channel. And um, if you really do enjoy the channel and you want to uh, contribute a bit more uh, through conversation or support it, then head on over to my Patreon page. There's a link at the end of the video. Uh, but for now, thanks ever so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Take care.